I received a call to pick up my daughter Lily because she'd been caught cheating on her practice SAT. After arriving, I learned Lily's friend Sam had also been caught cheating. Her score was cancelled, but thankfully Lily will still be allowed to retake the test, and this hasn't gone under any kind of record. When I talked to Lily about what happened, she told me that Sam's mother would punish Sam if she didn't earn an exceptionally high score, and Sam had in turn put pressure on my daughter to help her cheat. I felt for a long time that Sam is not a genuine friend to Lily and has been trying to hold my daughter back so that she feels better about her own poor choices. I'd spoken to Lily about this before and told her not to let Sam manipulate her into anything she knows is wrong. Lily told me that she'd understood and had done this anyway. I told Lily that to prove she will take her education seriously from now on, she will need to come up with the fee for her future tests and college applications on her own. I suggested she started working odd jobs, such as babysitting or dog walking for the neighbours to save up early. Despite telling me she understood, the time to register for the next test is approaching and my daughter asked me to pay because she's short on cash and her school won't offer the test again until spring. She brought up the original excuse that Sam pressured her into cheating. I told my daughter, no, I'm not going back on my word. She will learn to treat these opportunities with respect once she has to earn it herself. I also told Lily that she needs to stop letting Sam manipulate her and if she can't stand up to her, then maybe she doesn't have the mental maturity for college. Our extended family became involved in the disagreement and insisted that we cover the fee because it's for her education and it's important for college. I'm not allowing them to cover the fee for Lily because it's undermining my lesson. Inevitably, someone pretending to be her friend is going to pressure her to cheat again in college. Then, when she gets caught again, I will wind up losing thousands of dollars and Lily will lose her shot at a good education. Am I the idiot for putting my foot down and making my daughter pay for her college testing and applications because she was caught cheating? Eh, uh, I think technically not the idiot. You set the boundary and enforce it. But I agree with your relatives. You can't let her sit out on a year of college over this. Did she already have an income stream? Was she already dog walking? How much time has passed? I.e. was this a reasonable expectation for her to come up with the cash in the time frame? Sam, whatever, that's her issue. She could have just as easily lied about that to keep herself out of trouble, so don't think your daughter is above cheating just for the sake of it. So how does this punishment teach her the skills she needs to say no next time? The punishment doesn't fit the crime. I don't see how it's supposed to help her develop a backbone against peer pressure. I wouldn't choose a punishment that could interfere with my kid achieving their college of choice. That could create lifelong resentment your kid though but you are the idiot the goal is to teach her the severity of getting kicked out of the test so that she appreciates the stakes involved it's a whole lot cheaper than trying to plagiarize in college getting expelled and having to pay student loans for a degree you didn't get it teaches her that actions have consequences and that she can't always be bailed out by her parents what a stupid punishment punishing a kid who lacks maturity and self-confidence doesn't help them overcome it it just makes them more anxious about you catching them being weak again. OP, instead of basically telling your child she sucks because she wasn't strong enough to say no to someone, taking advantage of her, you could have turned it into a meaningful lesson that could have actually helped her too, such as having a volunteer as a tutor or at a school or maybe teach a class. And I hope you're okay if she eventually decides just to forego college altogether because if I was your kid and you forced me to pay for my own testing as a punishment, I would have just said, cool, I don't need to go then. I, 26 male, and my fiancé, 26 female, have been engaged since last year. We've been planning for the wedding since, and it's settled for next March. My fiancé's family is very doting on her, and they made it clear to me several times how they only treat me like family because she loves me. For the sake of this story, I'll just call them in-laws. My fiancé and I had plans for our wedding, but because my parents paid for the house we live in, her parents insisted on paying for the wedding. Although she did tell me they had intentions to, I didn't know it was going to be for everything. At first, everything was fine. We wanted a venue, but we compromised on something agreeable, like another venue because my in-laws fancied it more and we could take it aesthetic-wise. Or maybe instead of pink flowers, they wanted purple. I found it tacky, but sure. The problem came when I got the invitation list. 300 people? I've always made it clear I preferred an intimate wedding. But out of respect for my fiancé and her family, I did compromise with her to go maybe 200. 
And even then, how do you get 200 people to come to your wedding? I pulled her aside and asked her whether she knew anyone. She said maybe 80 people. The rest were relatives. She could tell I was restless and tried to assure me by cutting some. But she doesn't understand why I'm nervous because it's all paid. We went back in and asked my in-laws whether we could cut down the size, but my in-laws were adamant, saying that weddings are sacred and everyone should witness the union of our bond. My sister scoffed from the side and made a snarky comment that we didn't need every neighbour to come get some free food to show our love, and my in-laws were angry. They said this number was already disrespecting their daughter and I should man up and face a crowd. I'm a bit introverted. They also commented that since they're paying, they should have a say in who they want to invite. That kind of triggered me, and I retaliated by saying that this was my wedding, and if they insisted on this number of people, I, as the groom, would simply not go. They were shocked since I usually don't lose my temper. I'm a very mild-tempered man. My fiancé looked at me disappointed, and so did my in-laws. They just left and haven't contacted me. I really don't know if that was idiotic of me, considering the whole wedding is paid for, and my in-laws have been working tirelessly to make our wedding perfect. Almost every compromise made by my in-laws for this wedding were fought by her. Listen to yourself. For a wedding and for a marriage, the only compromises that should be made are between you and your wife. She wants blue, you want red, you go with purple. Fine. It shouldn't be you and her against her parents. Money comes with strings attached, so your mistake was accepting their money to begin with. Have a private wedding at the courthouse or church beforehand and then do this show for her family. You get your intimate moment, they don't know, and then they get their show. The wedding is just the beginning of OP's problems. Dude, I'm more concerned about the marriage than the wedding. You have one sentence about talking to your future wife about this. You two are not ready to be married. The red flags are flying. When you marry, you marry the whole family. Are you prepared to deal with this pack of idiots for years to come? Yes, my boyfriend James, 24 male, and I are both grown adults, and he has a stuffed toy turtle. He's weirdly attached to the thing. He keeps it in his closet and occasionally takes it out to look at it for a bit before putting it back. It's slightly larger than the size of my hand, grey and pretty unremarkable. Recently, I've gotten a bit suspicious of the thing, which sounds stupid, but it does look like it's meant to hide something, and whenever he picks it up, he squeezes it a little as if to check the inside. About a week ago, I couldn't take the curiosity anymore and took the thing out myself. There were stitches on the underside, and I took a little nail clipper and opened it. I just wanted to see what was inside. It ended up just being a pen. Of course, I stitched it back closed and he didn't notice. This morning, he took it out again, and this time he noticed. Apparently, I used the wrong shade of grey. James was furious and called me quite a few names, including that I was the worst person to have ever existed and that he despised me. I reminded him that when I asked if I could touch it, he said I could do whatever as long as I put it back right. He said that obviously didn't extend to cutting it open and I was a psycho. He hasn't been speaking to me since and is keeping the turtle with him, even though he's pretty embarrassed by it. Am I the idiot for stitching up my boyfriend's toy with the wrong thread? You are the idiot. What is your fixation on the stuffed toy? Many people have keepsakes like stuffed animals. I have one for sentimental reasons. It's not stupid, nor does the item have to be remarkable. What was stopping you from just asking your boyfriend? No, you had to snoop, physically damaging it and exposing deep trust issues on your part. On top of that, you're not even remorseful. Your excuse is that he said you could do whatever you want with it as long as it's put back. Apologize. Sincerely and profusely for how horrible your actions were. If you genuinely feel no remorse, if you can't apologize sincerely, if you can't start respecting his feelings for this stuffed turtle, you should break up because he deserves someone better. Yeah, you betrayed his trust over your own insecurities and dare to think that sewing up the hole you made equates with putting it back right. Why didn't you ask him instead of cutting his childhood memento open? How often do you go through his phone? Don't bother whining to us when he dumps you. This is what I can't understand. If the thing is obviously so precious to him, wouldn't the normal and natural thing be just to talk to him? OP is clearly jealous over a stuffed toy. Major red flags all over this one. What the heck? This isn't about the thread you used. The thread you used got you caught. 
or dissecting a stuffed animal because you were suspicious of what was inside something smaller than your hand. I, 26 male, have been engaged to my fiancée Zyra, 25 female, for six months. We were friends in high school and only started dating when we were around 22. We were close in high school, we were in the same friend group, but drifted apart and reconnected in university, so it's safe to say I do know her really well. She's a kind person most of the time, however she can have a bit of a mean streak. I've witnessed it at times and she can make people cry. My friend group mainly consists of gamers. I don't hang out with them in person that much because I'm not very social and prefer spending time with my fiancé. Even during calls, I'm mostly muted or don't talk, but I do enjoy their company. I guess I'm just shy. My friends know I have a fiancé and they invited her out with us last night. There are girls in our friend group, two of them, and this other girl in our group can be a bit of a pick-me girl. I'll call her Emma. She gets along well with the rest of us, but sometimes she can be a bit annoying. So last night we all went out to dinner and the other two girls and my girl were getting along really well. They really hit it off until Emma joined us later in the evening. She started off making passive-aggressive backhanded comments to Zyra, who initially just rolled her eyes and laughed, but I told Emma to stop because I didn't want the night to end with someone crying. She took this as a joke, but stopped messing with Zyra for a while, and then she started up again. I think she was trying to make my fiancé insecure or jealous or something, but Emma kept saying how close we were because we game. Zyra knows I'm not close with her because every time I play with them, she's either in my lap or right next to me watching me play. Emma told Zyra not to worry about her because she wouldn't take me away from her. Zyra smiled at her and I knew the night was over. She looked Emma up and down and said, You? Take him from me? Good luck. Emma tried defending herself and brushing it off as a joke, but Zyra just kind of let loose, I guess. She called Emma a pathetic excuse of a woman. She asked if she desperately needed male validation or if she was deluded enough to think she, Emma, was more important than her, Zyra, in my life, among other things. I'm not going to lie. I think it's hot when she gets like this, so I just sat by and watched. Emma started crying and we left after she said thank you to the rest of my friends. The girls in my group have been messaging me saying I should have stopped Zyra and maybe not let her be rude, and Emma has gone radio silent. My other friends think Zyra is justified, and I do too. But did she take it too far, and should I have stopped her? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She did seem to overreact a little and was very unsubtle. That being said, Emma started it, and anyway, it's not your job to police Zyra's language or control her way of defending herself. Emma shouldn't dish out if she can't take it, and she sounds like a repulsive person in general. Zyra was right to defend herself, and you are correct for not getting involved. You two sound like you have a good relationship, but less can be said about your friends. You are the idiot for not ending Emma's involvement and will continue to be the idiot if you continue to be friends with Emma. She clearly has a thing for you and was going out of her way to cause issues between you. The way I see it, she messed around and found out, and that's what's up. And your other friends standing up for Emma? Do they seriously think you should allow another person to disrespect your fiancé? What kind of a man doesn't stand with and be loyal to the woman he plans on spending his life with? Kudos to you on that, but you are walking a thin line as you didn't put a stop to Emma or your friends outright for having issues with how Zyra handled herself. Didn't see anyone else shutting that crap down. About a month ago, my wife's parents both died in a car crash. She has been an emotional mess. We live in her hometown, so we've been seeing her family and friends often. I've been supportive in any way I can, taking care of all house chores and being there for her every day. Here's where things get messy. She has an ex. Let's call him Luke. Luke is not just her ex. Luke is still friends with her and her first love. They were high school sweethearts, and Luke was almost like another child to her parents. The death of her parents affected Luke a lot too. Honestly, I didn't initially like the fact they were friends, but I trusted my wife and moved on from that feeling. A few days ago, my wife said she would go out with her family. I told her I could go with her, but she insisted on going alone. She didn't come back until the next morning. I tried to call her and call family members, but no one knew where she was. When she did come back, she was a mess. I asked her where she was all night. She told me she messed up. I tried to calm her down and told her to tell me what happened and that it was okay. She could talk to me. She said she slept with Luke. I didn't react much. I told her I needed some time to think. 
She's apologized so many times now. I did eventually ask her what happened. She said she met up with Luke and they were both messes. They reminisced about her parents, which led them to remembering their relationship. They were both drinking and it just happened. I'm so conflicted right now. My wife is probably going through the worst time in her life, but I don't think I want to be with her now. I'm furious at her. For better or worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Are you stuck to that? Do you want someone who couldn't? Man, she's chosen who she wants to have support her through this, and it's not you. She was at her lowest, and she chose someone other than her husband. She knew what she was doing when she lied she was going out with family. She knew what she was doing when she was meeting with Luke. She knew what she was doing with ignoring her husband's calls. She knew she was going to cheat and sleep with that guy. That wasn't a mistake. There were tons of decisions to make, lies to tell, and one person to hurt, her husband, who was standing there and being her rock. I lost three family members, including both parents, very close together. Absolute rock-bottom grief. Did not betray my marriage vows. She left you at home because she wanted to be with Luke. I'm so sorry, OP. You didn't and don't deserve this. I treasure such a man with all my heart, and I know there are more women like that. Unfortunately, that's not your wife.